Oh, yeah. Going live. You are live now, Jazz One. I am live now, too. We're all live. We're all alive, and we're live. <laughs> so we far, are. so good. <laughs> so far, so good. We'll see if we make it through this this live. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, try to try our best to get through this live alive. Uh, here we are. We're talking on this Friday. Some nerdy shit like we usually do. Like we do. Uh, we're going to cover two things tonight on a Thunder Pop Live. We're going to get right into Godzilla versus King Kong, which is a, a bona fide blockbuster movie that is simul simultaneously released on streaming and in the movie theaters this, this past week. Uh, now, was it a bona fide good movie? I'm going to ask Jazz One that question and see what he thinks. I'm, I'm curious to see because he watched it this week. Um, <laughs> and I watched most of it. But my Roku started acting up yesterday. So I got to about the last 15, 15 minutes of it. So you can, you can spoil the ending for me. I'll still watch it. It's fine. I know that some monster had a beat down on another monster. There was probably a lot of fire breathing. Some more buildings got destroyed. I was at that the, point, you know, in the movie. The sex scene was a little bit unexpected. Whoa. I, I, I guess I need to go... <laughs> Hey, it was HBO Skinamax. <laughs> somehow they that's, that's a mix up there. I guess I'll have to get to the, the finale then. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a is there a monster makeout scene? Was there at least was there at least foreplay in this? It was like King Kong and oh Godzilla. <laughs> yes, I think you were on the wrong. Streaming platform. I oh, I was on HBO Skinamax. Yeah, you're on, you're on HBO Skinamax. Yeah, they were just in Halloween costumes. Oh, it might not have been the oh, movie. Oh, okay. You watched the wrong movie, sir. That's fine. We'll talk about that movie instead. If that's the one you watched. We'll talk about that. I watched have, both. You did a back to back, a double feature kind of thing. Well, we'll we'll talk about that movie and and uh and all that's it's bad acting and no just kidding <laughs> I didn't say that I didn't say that bad act. I didn't say all the bad acting that just came out but anyway no it actually it had some good acting in it there's some good there's some actually really good actors in there and I'm actually going to talk oh, about yeah. a couple of them um one of them that is in a very well known TV show Stranger Things um is in that movie. Um, so yeah, is it also then we're going to get into Falcon Winter Soldier. We're three episodes in. Uh, I did finish the third episode today. I didn't have any Roku malfunctions. I was able to finish the third episode. <laughs> Actually watched it on my a laptop, uh, plugged into the computer and watched it. And it was, uh, it, quite a roller coaster ride today on Falcon Winter Soldier. So we're going to get into that as well and talk about that. I got a stack of notes. I got jazz one over here, uh, for this Thunder Pop Extra. We got cool people already commenting com, comment, comment, commenting on our show. <laughs> Hopefully good comments and not troll jobs. Jazzy, I still have my Godzilla and, and his launching hand, bro. You two dudes are the best thing on Facebook by far. <laughs> Thumbs up. This might be your buddy that came in and commented on our last show. And his name, uh, i trying to remember his name, but I'm sorry. I'm forgetting your name because it just says Facebook user down there. So, but anyway, Facebook user, thank you for uh, for the comments. I appreciate po you. Positive energy, we do appreciate it. That's that that positive energy gets going. All right, let's do the opening credit. So we got that Godzilla, King Kong, Falcon, Winter Soldier. This coming up next. Okay, I lied. Thunder pop, 
I'm going to stop before the couple of people that are out there watching tune out because they're going to get tired of that ringing in their ears. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thunder Pop Dome. Over to my left or right, depending on where you're, which way, which angle you're looking at. The one and only Jazz One coming to us in the Thunder Pop Dome virtually. In the, the jazz home. cave. <laughs> in the jazz cave. Coming at you. Give you a little applause there. We're going to talk about all the nerdy stuff that's going on in the world. Coming up on Thunder Pop. Just to reset it, Godzilla versus King Kong. God damn it. And then we're going to get into Falcon Winter Soldier. God damn it. And I won't say God damn it after everything I say after, you know, in this show, after every statement. Okay. <laughs> I'm just super excited. And I'm sorry, uh, Aunt Sandy, that I was swearing in this live. I won't do it anymore. Okay. If you're watching. Uh, that's the thing about being on Facebook. You never know who's going to pop up watching one of these. <laughs> I have to be careful what I'm going to say. Because of aunts and cousins and people I went to school with. It's it, it's a whole different dynamic when you start putting your live streams up on Facebook. It's it's different. Okay. Godzilla versus King Kong was obviously supposed to be a theatrical release, and it still ended up being a theatrical release, but it also ended up being simulcast uh, or sim simultaneously released onto, onto the new streaming service, HBO Max. So it's part of a string of movies this year that are going to go to the cinema, and to streaming platform. Now, this is a one-year experiment as HBO Max, Warner Brothers, Legendary Films have it said that next year they will resume uh, the, the, the standard practice of a theatrical release first, then later going to their streaming platform of HBO Max. But this year, due to the pandemic, they're doing it a little different this year. It's also a good testing ground to see if that could be a model that might be used more in the future, I'm sure. Uh, would you know how how that would work? Um, of course, it's all you know. That's all speculation. But Jazz One, if this had been uh, still uh, released the way it was supposed to have been released, this movie, part of the Monster Verse, uh, if it had been released just as a theatrical release this week in a normal time, not during a pandemic, would it have been a movie that you still would have uh, ventured out to the movie theater for, or was this a movie you always were only going to watch it as a streamer? I don't anyway. know. Like, I probably will lean just toward the streaming, you know. Mm -hmm. And usually, I let's that's how I rank movies. You know, are they like theater worthy? Are they, yeah. you know, wait, red box worthy? Are they streaming worthy? You know, are they dollar bin worthy? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Like, I doubt I would have made the trek to the theater. You know. Uh, in regular times for, you know, Godzilla versus King Kong. Like, I was curious about it, uh, but not just, like, counting down the days. Yeah, it wasn't that. Now, this is the fourth one, apparently, of a, a series. This was the part of the MonsterVerse. Um, I was, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm a late adapter to this, the MonsterVerse. Now, now, historically... I am a I I do have a long history with King Kong and Godzilla movies. Uh, in fact, King Kong, I was feeling really nostalgic this week before I watched this movie because, with, in the case of King Kong, that was a movie for me that was probably you know it's not Star Wars that's the earliest memory I have of a blockbuster when I was a kid. It's actually the 1970s uh, King Kong movie. Yeah, not giving away my age, but uh, yeah, I think. You know, seeing uh, Godzilla in a uh, a drive-in was probably like mm -hmm. one of my first like movie memories. Because I remember looking out the back window of my parents' vehicle and seeing boobs, you know, on the other screen. <laughs> I'm not sure what the movie was, but you know, it, it rivaled the interest I had in Godzilla. It's funny you bring up, up drive-ins. I actually wanted to ask you about drive-ins. Drive-ins are have made a comeback, obviously, during the pandemic, um, because that it's an opportunity to go out and see a movie, but still have some social distancing. People can stay in their cars. Um, they can keep their windows rolled up. I think it's been so long since I've been to a drive-in movie theater, but I know you somehow you tune in on your radio to listen to the sound. 
the audio of the movie, I know it sounds so foreign to me now. It's like, how does this work? How does this? But now I had been, and again, I'm aging myself a little bit, but I had been to a couple of drive-in movies as a kid uh, in, back in the day, and they were known. Well, they had that thing that hung on the uh, window. Yeah. They yeah. Had something, yeah, something on that. That's right. So I remember that. And so drive-ins making a resurgence. I'm actually, I haven't been out to one since, uh, the, since this past year, but I'm actually wanting to go to one. There's, there's a movie right now that's out called nobody, uh, that's getting a, a high praise critical acclaim and actually did pretty good last week before King Kong Godzilla came out. Uh, and it's break kind of a breaking bad meets uh, John wick. Oh it's, shit. It's a real fish out of the water scenario where this guy becomes a, a hitman of sorts um so yeah it's getting really critical acclaim and it's it's a movie that actually is not available on streaming right now it's going to be only available as a theatrical until april so it, it's going to be it, so it's running in drive-in movie theaters right now and i was thinking well that would be a fun one maybe i'd go see that at a drive-in because i can't see it at home anyway oh so, yeah and just the fact so what do you think about the drive-ins coming back do you have any interest in revisiting that again do you think it's going to stick uh, going forward, or you think it's just sort of a, a, a kind of a stopgap? I don't I mean, know. It's like I know here, you know, not to get super regional, but I know was it the Blue Starlight here in Austin? Yeah, you know, which I guess it was kind of a small, you know, drive-in. Yeah, and uh, haven't been out to it. You know, should make the trek out. But yeah, earlier you're talking about how um, Godzilla and King Kong, you know, hit HBO Max and hit theaters at the same time. Yeah. See, I think Disney Plus probably has, like, the best concept with it, you know. Like, with the uh, new movies being, like, you know, hitting the theaters, but also $30, mm -hmm. you know, if you want to pay it on uh, Disney Plus. Which I know $30 sounds like a lot for a movie. Right. And if I'm watching by myself, yeah, $30 is a, you know, punch in the gut for just one movie. Yeah. But... You know, if you're watching it with one other person, that's mm -hmm. like $15 each. Then now we're talking, yeah. yeah, now we're talking yeah. movie ticket prices. If yeah. you're watching with three people, you know, I mean, if you're, if you have like a family at home, you know, and you're watching four or five of you watching it, all of a sudden it's cheaper than going to the theater. So, uh, like, as far as a sustainable model, like I think Disney Plus is doing Doing it a little better than, say, HBO Max is. What do you think about in July? We get together and go, we go in on Black Widow. And because Black Widow is going to be an example of that. It's going to get $30 on uh, on Disney Premium or Dis I call it Disney Plus 30 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to get a Disney Plus 30 bucks uh, release in July. It's for sure coming out now. Black Widow finally going to come out. I think it's going to be really good. Um, I have a projector. We could hook that thing up outside, wait till it gets dark. It would be late. It'd be like nine o'clock probably before we get dark. And we could run that movie out of my driveway. So if you're. And we can have like a drive in in your driveway? In my driveway. Yeah. Dude, you could pull, up, you could pull your car up the curve. So I don't know. Think about it. We could go in on that. It would be like you said, just the two of us, fifteen each. It's it's suddenly it's a it's it's like a going to the theater. But I I don't know. It's Bro, an idea. What's your Venmo? <laughs> I think it's an idea. I think we we might be onto something. We'll have a Black Widow party, um, and I, I'll heck heck if we do it as a block party and all my neighbors can sit and watch it in front of their house, uh, we're gonna all pay like fifty cents for it. Boom! See, like. Disney Plus got the better idea, you know, like I, like you said, I didn't know it was only one year with HBO Max getting like theatrically released movies early. But, yeah, I just don't think that model is sustainable, you know. Yeah. No. And, yeah, HBO Max is a new service. They wanted to get their name out there. They knew that it was going to be a loss either way for them. But this gets eyeballs and, and new subscriptions. Uh, I mean, they've got it. It's, it's a pretty good lineup. Dune at the end of the year, the Dune remake, the Dune the, the new Dune, um, they're going to have a Suicide Squad, but this time with James Gunn from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy at, uh, as a director, as a director of that film. A mostly new cast. It's kind of a soft reboot of Guardians of the uh, Suicide Squad. So, oh, yeah. I don't, and you were talking about Dune Patrol earlier. Uh, there are some 
pretty good content and you get all the Warner the Warner Brothers library. Okay, let's talk about this movie, Godzilla versus King Kong. A little bit embarrassing here because I'm doing a react to it, but my Roku started acting up last night. I was watching, I was finishing watching it late late, late last night. And it's a good like popcorn. It's not a serious film. It's just a popcorn movie. You were talking about whether you would have saw it at the drive-in or at the movie theater or waited for streaming and you kind of rate movies. For me, it's kind of a, it's based on when it comes out. If this movie had came out like in a big weekend where there was other options, like uh, same week as Black Widow or, or uh, you know, whatever, some other big movie that, that I was interested in, it's probably going to lose you know, in, in the selection uh, for movies that I'm going to go see. But if it's in a barren wasteland of a month, where there's not much else to see at the movie theater. And I'm, I'm really I'm kind of bored and I want to go to a movie. Then, yeah, I probably will go see Godzilla versus King Kong. It is a great movie to see on the big screen because obviously it's two big monsters fighting each other. There's a lot of visual effects. They they're they're stomping on buildings. It's it's uh it's a big screen movie. It really is. But. Anyway, I will say this with this movie. I'm a late adapter to the monster verse. It's it's uh it's what it is what it is. It's a B movie. It's a big budget B, B movie. Uh at times some of the dialogue for me was a little bit like hard to not uh you know laugh at. It's kind of a movie you can actually kind of keep in the background with the volume down and still kind of follow it. <laughs> and I think that's what this movie is designed to be. Like I was like I was having trouble with the sound on my Roku device and I was like I'm just going to go with it. I can still understand what's going on. <laughs> and <laughs> it, you know so that it, it's it is what it is. Uh there was I mean the best scenes are with the monsters. They're the star of the movie. Uh King Kong actually stills the show for me. Uh Yeah, and, it's like I don't think like you know I think the mistake was some of the uh previous Godzilla and King Kong movies is that uh, they try to get you too much into the human story. Mm -hmm. I think they found like a really uh, good balance uh, with yeah. this. You know? That was something I liked. I agree with I, that. The one thing that kind of gets me though, like I know watching a Godzilla or King Kong movie, some buildings are going to get destroyed. Yeah. But oh, yeah. since 2001, it's a little bit uncomfortable seeing building buildings getting isn't that you know, something knocked over you know yeah. like same thing with like superhero movies you know mm -hmm. uh it's like uh you know with the superman movies and stuff i'm like i'm uncomfortable seeing buildings getting you no know, knocked down <laughs> you know since 9 11. yeah isn't that something how something like that can it can impact and here's the thing. we're gonna talk about falcon winter soldier here in a little bit but how eerie was it for to hear them talking about uh, serums and, and and vaccines? Oh yeah, Falcon and Winter Soldier. And I'm like, I started thinking, are they are they trying to protect the uh, the COVID vaccines from getting hijacked by by a terrorist group? <laughs> no, it's a serum for the the super soldiers. Spoil spoil alert. But it was funny to hear that. I mean, so it's funny because that that show they started filming that show before the pandemic. It had to to go on a hiatus. And then they resumed filming. I don't know how far into the season they were when they had to, to halt production for COVID for the pandemic. Yeah. So that part I'm not I'm not clear on, but that was that was the thing. But yeah, it's, it's kind of eerie with movies. And think about how many movies were in development that probably didn't get made because it involved a scene with a building crumbling down after 2001. Um, how many pandemic movies might have been in production? Because Hollywood made a lot of pandemic movies before COVID. Um, that was, that was a, a, a genre of movie in, it, in itself. How many pandemic movies have been canceled because of 2020? I mean, I think in the future, we're definitely going to see some, you know, yeah. I mean, it's a nearly global relatable thing, you know, mm -hmm. and there's like, of course, everybody's story is unique, but there's a lot of similarities in, mm -hmm. in stories, you yeah. know? whether it's like people living alone in isolation or, you know, being stuck in a house with people you can't stand, <laughs> you know, it's like, I really believe there's going to be uh, several movies and TV shows, series, you know, that touches on these times, you know, just yeah. the fact that it's not over yet. You know, I think once we get past it, you know, we'll, we're going to be reflecting on you know, these days for a long time. Oh yeah. No, it's it's the 9/11. Uh 
It's Operation Desert Storm, which had movies made about it. Operation Desert Storm had movies. Obviously, going back even further to Vietnam, this had many, many movies set in Vietnam, the 60s. So, yeah, absolutely. The Cold War. The Cold War had... And, and actually, Cold War was probably one of the things that was covered more during the Cold War. There were actually a lot of like movies, TV shows that covered the Cold War in the middle of the Cold War, which was oh, yeah. near eerie at the time. Um, but yeah, I was a big... The old King Kong is nostalgic for me. It goes. It's one of the first blockbuster movies that I remember. It's a precursor to Star Wars, actually. It came out a little bit before Star Wars. I remember my cousins having the, the, the King Kong stickers. And everyone well, thought, like which version, you know, like, you know, like mm-hmm. I'm, King Kong, like literally goes back to like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, 50s or something. I know there was oh, like yeah. a revival in the 70s or whatever. It just seems like almost every decade Kong comes back. Yeah, it, it is. It's an IP that, that they keep going back to. Uh, I, I remember how simple the plot was. It was just like they go to Island. They get Kong. They bring him back to New York. He he gets obsessed with the with the woman in the white dress. He, he goes and takes the woman in the white dress. He he puts her up on top of a building or a tower. He stomps on things. He chases around people. It was a pretty simple plot, if I remember correctly. It was a different a different time. This movie, Godzilla King Kong, obviously they've created a, a verse, a universe. Uh, it gets into a, a lot of. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, to me, the best character. The conspiracy theory podcaster. I really enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed. I enjoyed any scene that he was in. I thought he was. I, I was. I was more in, interested when those characters came up. Him and the two kids, the this uh, uh, Millie Bobby Brown, who's in it from Stranger Things, and then the other kid, uh, the, the the three that that trio yeah. that trio to me was way more interesting than the other set of characters that was going on off um, on their own thing. Um, simultaneously they would kind of go back and forth between the, the two groups of people. Um, so that, that, but I, well, his stuff was to me was the most interesting of the human. Uh, oh yeah. I can't remember his character and I can't remember yeah. the actor's name, Yeah, but uh, the podcast guy, uh, mm-hmm. he is a uh, paper boy in the Atlanta uh, series from FX, uh, okay. Donald yeah. Glover's show. Yeah. And it's like, some people get typecasted in my head sometimes. Uh huh. You know, like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, like yeah. every movie I see him in, yeah, he's that kid from What's Eating Gilbert Grape. You know, yeah. like when he's up on the front of the boat in Titanic, I'm the king of the world. I'm yeah. like, get that kid down before he falls in the water. And like James Gattafini, yeah. always Tony Soprano. Rest I don't in, care if he's in, in another movie. Yeah, rest in peace. He's to still him Tony too. Soprano. Yeah. Like when he's doing the voice and where the wild things are. Yeah. And he was a monster. I'm like, someone's going to get shot. You know, you know, some people get typecast in my head, like John Lithgow though, that wouldn't change. Yeah. He shifted Before it. he was always the footloose. You no know, father. Yeah. <laughs> but with Dexter, he became, you know, that killer. Yeah. Good actor. So, yeah. Actor. So like when I saw the podcast guy, you know, I'm like, no, that's paper boy. <laughs> yeah. And see if you've watched that show and so you knew him from that show for me. I, well, he's good. He was good in this show, but I get, I get, I do get the typecasting. Um, now that was the thing. Mark Hamill dealt with that early in his career. Cause after he played Luke Skywalker, he was so Luke Skywalker. He made, I think it was a Corvette, the Corvette movie he makes after star, right after star Wars. No, yeah, no, the other way around. He made, uh, I believe that yeah. right before. He made that right before Star Wars. Okay. Yeah. I was close to that. Yeah. So he he did that. But so Harrison Ford, even Harrison Ford, is Harrison Ford Han Solo or Indiana Jones? In no, your, in he's not. You know, I, we've discussed this before. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Mark what, Hamill maybe. is Luke Skywalker. You know, Luke Skywalker yeah. is, you know, if you had a real life Luke Skywalker, that's yeah. Mark Hamill. You know, then yeah. same thing with uh, Carrie Fisher. You know, yeah. like even... I don't know. She had like the spirit of Leia, you know, uh-huh. yeah. and like, you know, uh, sure. Harrison Ford, mm-hmm. you know, his gr- gruffiness or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, no, he is Han Solo. Like those three actors weren't acting. Those people just were themselves in Star Wars. So he's he's Han Solo when he's Indiana Jones. 
Exactly. He is Professor Han Solo. The, the uh, another thing I want to point out, talking about typecasting, but not so much typecasting, but actresses that look so they're like lookalikes. I thought they had cloned Mackenzie Phillips. This actress that's in this movie to me is like the second coming. And so Mackenzie Phillips is the uh, one of the, the girls, one of the ladies in One Day at a Time, the original One Day at a Time from the 70s. And I thought they had cloned Mackenzie Phillips because I kept watching that movie. I kept seeing this and I'm like, where do I know this actress from? I've seen her in other things, <laughs> but like I saw her in something like in another lifetime. It's like they, the biggest story of the movie is not the King Kong Godzilla. It's that they clone Mackenzie Phillips to make that. Hot take. Mm -hmm. King Kong's not even the big, the best big monkey movie. What Ooh. was the other one? Uh, Mighty oh. Joe Young? Yes. I thought that one was a superior big monkey movie. Yeah, it's a good good point. Yeah, King Kong might be the more famous of the giant gorillas, but yeah, definitely is a good is a good point there. Now we I found that the, so so King Kong obviously is set up in this movie to be the 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 one that you're rooting for, the good guy, the sympathetic character, my right or my right. And Godzilla is set up in this movie at, at first to be sort of the villain. Now that's no, that's, that's the point there is I've missed the last few minutes. I've, I've, there's like 15 minutes at the end. I've not seen. So there could be a plot twist other than the sex scene that you mentioned. <laughs> HBO so, Skinamax. <laughs> it, it could turn out when I finished the movie, it could turn out when I finished the movie that uh, I might be fooled. And maybe King Kong was the bad guy all along. And Godzilla was the good guy. <laughs> So I, I don't know, it, maybe. Uh, another thing that, uh, so what do you think about that? Were you, weren't you rooting for King Kong? You, you really felt for him? You felt the emotion of King Kong's, you know? I think they should have tried to talk it out first and not immediately go to violence. Okay. <laughs> Bo both of them guilty of going straight to the violence, weren't they? Yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, they could have talked their feelings out, you know? And it could have it could have really been a good message to uh, to p to kids that hey you don't have to go straight to directly to violence you can sit down we can talk this out they could have brought they could have brought in a counselor for him they could have done some counseling the therapy group therapy they could group have group, monster therapy group monster therapy would have been nice you could have sat down and and say hey ease up there no no fire breathing Just <laughs> take a take a chill pill. <laughs> Have a seat. No, no, don't have a seat on that building. <laughs> have, have, a seat, have a seat over here on the ground. <laughs> have a seat over here on the ground. Okay, we'll sit on the ground and then we'll in the park, but no, but not on that, uh, not on that, but over here on the grass. That's fine. It'll leave a hole in the ground, but that's that's fine. And we'll see, my thing is like the scale, right? Mm -hmm. it, like, how tall is King Kong supposed to be? Like, I want to oh, say. Yeah. I've like heard. 50 feet or something, right? Something, something like that, yeah. But like Godzilla is like way, way bigger. But I don't know. The sizes seem kind of a little bit odd to me. They really wanted to play up that underdog story. Like, you know, kind of the Rocky of the monster movies with King Kong being the underdog. I think with him looking a lot, a little smaller in a side-by-side -side comparison. Another actor of this movie, and I had this actress's name, um, Rebecca Hall, by the way is the clone, the Mackenzie Phillips clone. Oh, yeah. That I mentioned earlier. I had this actress, uh, her last name, I think, is Gonzalez. I had her name written down earlier, and I took it. But she's in this movie. This girl, by the way, is perfect. This lady, sorry, girl, the woman, has perfected the the mean girl character. Because <laughs> a couple of movies I've seen her in, she she she's perfect playing the mean girl type character. Um. I found early on I was rooting against her, and it turned out she ended up being a plot to the spoiler alert, but she turns out to be a, a bad guy. But here's the thing. What's the deal? I mean, she decided I'm going to put on a leather outfit, and then let's go chase monsters. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was – I'm pretty sure – I tried to find a full body shot so I could show her out her costume in the movie, her wardrobe, but I'm pretty sure she was wearing leather pants when they went monster hunting. I don't know if you caught it. <laughs> Did you catch this? The shiny pants she was wearing? No, no. Uh, but what I've learned about leather pants, they usually have cocaine. 
could be something to that. Yeah, so maybe that is what was keeping her awake because they if were up he like, has a leather cowboy hat with flames, probably sells coke. <laughs> Maybe that's how she stays awake because they're up for. They seem like they're up for hours following King Kong around in the in the ocean. And, and they end up on this monster portal that they go down into the middle of the the Earth. Yeah, and, the Hollow have, Earth. Spoiler the hollow, alert! Yeah, the Hollow Earth spoiler. And they're going down the portal. And by the way, her leather pants don't get any like debris on them. They're like super clean. Uh, I don't know if she was. They, so they were like they would have a crew come in and and like clean them off in the middle of takes and then. <laughs> Like wipers, and they would wipe down her, you know, spray it and wipe them down to keep them the, sh the shine. Anyway, I, I, so I know the leather outfit. She's she's great though. I've seen her in another movie recently on Netflix um, about the uh, the I, I care a lot movie that's got the woman from uh, Gone Girl, and she's in it. She plays her girlfriend, and it's real. It's a psychological thriller where they and then it's got the guy from uh, from Game of Thrones, one of the guys from oh, Game well. of Thrones. Anyway, I recommend if you want to see a good psychological thriller with some plot twist, uh, I care a lot on Netflix. Oh, shit. I'll have to check it out. That actress is in it. And again, she's playing a mean girl in that movie. A really perf perfect job of playing a mean girl um, in I Care A Lot. So, yeah. So anyway, there we go. Uh, King Kong Godzilla. It's just a fun kind of popcorn movie. It's not, it's not going to be a masterpiece, right? Oh, exactly. Man, I was yeah. trying to find like some kind of angle like maybe it's western civilization versus like eastern civilization yeah. and then it's just like humans and robots and monsters yeah. and i was trying to find like some you know metaphors for this yeah there are none yeah. it's just monsters busting shit up and fighting and maybe that's all we want with this movie maybe we don't want too much i mean they could try to put a little more and they did try to put some layers to it like depth to it but i mean you could put the level of writing into it that you do with stranger things and that much thought into it would it work does the monster movie need it i guess jurassic world to a certain extent has a little more of that that goes a little bit further into it it was just monster fighting porn yeah you know? it's fine I mean, you know yeah. like you, you're putting it on to watch big monsters fight you yeah know? like you know, yeah, the pizza man may come to the door, you know, whatever. No, you're just there for monster fighting. That's it. That's fine. It's a monster. It's a monster bout. Okay. Another one. Big epic. Falcon Winter Soldier. By the way, I'm here for this show. I'm loving it. Three episodes in. Uh, I'm not surprised. I was expecting it to be great. Where are you at on, on Falcon Winter Soldier? I mean, I've seen a lot of people comparing and contrasting this with WandaVision. Yeah. And it's interesting, like, how different they are as shows. Mm -hmm. Like, WandaVision, like, had to be a series, had to be serialized, had to be yeah. a series. Like, you needed to be in each of those episodes, you know, for spend a little time in 50s, 60s, you know, Wanda reality. Uh, but, like, I'm really enjoying uh, Falcon Winter Soldier. Uh, but... This is just a Marvel movie. Yeah. Like, there's no difference in production quality of stuff you go to the theater and see oh. or you're streaming, you know, on uh, Disney+. Plus. I yeah. mean, it's just like, this has, like, movie type. Like, you, back in the day, you could tell, like, this is movie, you know, production exactly. quality. Right. You know, here's TV, less bells and whistles, but... Mm -hmm. Not anymore, man. It's oh. just like, and I just feel like I'm getting, you know, 45 minutes to 50 minutes of a Marvel movie every week, you know, every week. for however many weeks, you know. So I, I'm not complaining, but this feels a more like a Marvel movie, whereas yeah. WandaVision had to be a series. It was more avant garde, WandaVision at least the beginning of it, which was, and it worked, but it was one that was only going to work at, like you said, as a series that, that version of one division that they did, that they decided to go ahead with work that the street, the streaming platform was perfect for it. Where with Falcon winter soldier. Yeah. This could have been movies in the theater. They could have had a oh, Falcon yeah. winter soldier movie and it would have been all the same action that we're seeing in the show. 
Um, has definitely a Captain America Winter Soldier vibe from the, the second Captain America movie. Uh, you know, a lot of that same type of action and, and espionage and, and, you know, a little bit of mystery. Um, political uh, corruption going on behind the scenes, all that stuff. Uh, of course, the actors, the two of them, the two, uh, the two actors have great chemistry working off of each other. Uh, I'm really enjoying work, seeing them work work with each other as a kind of a buddy cop film. Uh, this week, we got uh, some, you know, kind of moving ahead into the third episode. This week, we get um, the big twist this week was the emergence of the From Nazi. Zemo. Zemo. Yeah. The Nazi Tony Stark is what I, I call it. Because <laughs> he turns out he's he's rich. Um, he's got a lot of money. He's got planes. He's got cars. Um, kind of a Nazi Tony Stark, maybe. But uh, no, it was fun. It was fun to see him this week. It was a nice little twist to see his character in there. Uh, and he added something, I thought, to the whole story. Um, and um, and then also, of course, this twist happened uh, early on in the show. John Walker. The new. Oh, yeah. The new Captain America. And uh, and the memes have been all over the map for John Walker. <laughs> Some, I mean. I mean, some of the memes not so nice. Uh, like you know, this one here. Um, there's a there's a shot of him in, in kind of his normal persona. Uh, but there was you know there was you got to be the you got to be shitting me meme that was in a lot of places. But the actor Wyatt Russell is actually the son of Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Get the hell out of here! Yeah. Wow. I didn't know that. For I knew they had a son. I knew about Wyatt Russell. But it wasn't it didn't really occur to me that that was who that was until about a week later after he had showed up as as John Walker. Uh, and by the way, yeah, he's he's portrayed in his suit to be kind of a, a a little bit on purpose, I think, goofball in the Captain America suit, especially when he first comes out. I think they almost film it to make him look a little bit more like, you know, less likable as Captain America. He's I mean, he's not I mean, he's not a bad looking guy. OK, so. There he is right there. But he's got the acting pedigree. And how hard is it to follow in the footsteps of two legends? It's hard enough to follow in the footsteps of one legend, but then to follow in the footsteps of two legends, both his mom and dad. So anyway, yeah. So he, and then, you know, for him to, to have the, humi the humility to say, okay, I'll, I know this character is going to be a bit of a mulligan, but I'm, I'm okay with doing it. It's going to be fun. Um, another little thing on him, he actually auditioned to be Captain America in the original movies. Oh, he, damn. He had an audition. Yeah. He, he of course, he didn't now, I'll tell you one thing I really liked on uh, the second episode. Yeah. LSU is Marvel canon. LSU yes. is, is in the MCU. Yes. Like, you know, I was like, go Tigers. <laughs> did, did you have to rewind it, listen to it again, and say, did I catch, did I hear that right? Bro, I, I paused my TV and I took a photo of it. I'm yeah. like, man, yeah. LSU li exists in the MCU. Like, I don't know if LSU exists in the DCEU, right? But exists in the MCU. So uh, that bumped up the MCU just a little bit. LSU was was in in fact confirmed as canon <laughs> in the MCU in the second episode. In fact, Sam Wilson turns out he is a he's he's from Louisiana. Oh yeah, his character. But here's a question for you. Is it a bit of a plot hole to make a guy from Louisiana, his character, his alias, be a Falcon in the in the same, you know, like uh, Atlanta Falcon? As a Saints fan, that does kind of uh, seem like a conflict. <laughs> I mean, was that a, was that thought through when they decided to make it? Because if you if you were going to be if you were you from Louisiana and you get you're going to be a superhero, okay? And you're coming up trying to figure out what your superhero alias is going to be. I bet it's not going to be Falcon. If you're, if, if you're, if you're, now, let me show you, just to show you how close the, the costume's aesthetic is to the actual Land of Falcon's uh, costume. Okay, uh, so look here. And you can see it's the same colors. It's the red and black. Um and I don't know who this, I don't know who this guy is. It's on, it's over there being uh, a sack. That is the goat. That <laughs> is Drew Brees. Just to be fair, I also have one of these. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> well, they're taking down Matt Ryan, and they so it's an equal fair, uh, equal fair there. Yeah. So I don't know. There's a, there was a plot hole there. I mean, is there a little bit of a plot hole there? Name a guy from Louisiana deciding that he's going to be Falcon. They probably don't know the reference, and I bet you Mackie brought that up like during shooting. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I don't know where he's from. The actor, if he's actually from Louisiana. No, he's from New Orleans. Yeah, he is from New Orleans. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so he definitely brought that up. Yeah, it's like during the uh, championships, LSU's championship season. Man, okay. they had somebody in their uh, digital department, like their hype videos, mm-hmm. like. Football hype videos okay. are like such a guilty pleasure for me, but uh, they had somebody just doing this incredible job, but they had uh, Mackie um, narrate one of them. Uh, uh, yeah, I have to uh, post on Twitter and uh, tag you, uh, but it's holy shit. Amazing. Like, so they wrote that into his character, you think, because of him all actually being from. Oh, Israel? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe they didn't have enough of an origin from him from the comic books because some of the stuff you know does a lot of the source material is from the Stanley, you know, the comic books. I don't know enough about Falcon's history in the comic books, um, but I, I, you know, to, w- to whether he was in Louis- a Louisiana in the comics or whether that was just something that. But my my instinct is they probably decided based on hit the actor that they would make that part of his character and make that canon that he was from Louisiana. So anyway, yes. Yeah, so- so maybe that was a, a something he, you know, was a little bit of a, uh, you know, maybe it's a, tr- it's a, it's also could be a, a great troll job if you decide to call yourself <laughs> Falcon. Say, I don't, I don't, because here's the way I could, I could, I could redcon this. Okay, this is how I'm gonna redcon it. Because at first I'm like a little bit of plot hole. First I'm like plot hole, but here's how I redcon it. If you are from Louisiana and you're a big Saints fan, you're from LSU, you're an LSU fan, whatever, like Sam Wilson. Maybe it's a bit of a troll job because you're going to take the Falcon and make it your, your, <laughs> your super, you make it, and make it your own. And in a way, it's kind of like saying, okay, now the Atlanta Falcons, people aren't going to think of when they think of a Falcon, they're not going to think of the Atlanta Falcons. They're going to think of Falcon MCU. <laughs> I and hope that, so. That in itself could be a way I could retcon that. Because I would hate the twist that if I got superpowers and I was a superhero, if somehow I was Crimson Tide Man, mm-hmm. I might not be a superhero. Like I may you, just give you show back. <laughs> you might pass on that job. You might pass on that job if they offered you that. that they offered you that show. You might say, oh, "I'm gonna go pass on that." So, oh boy! Well, so, that and I date outside my family. <laughs> All right, always got to talk show in uh, Alabama. <laughs> oh boy, um, getting. I'm gonna get back to one thing on more on uh, White Russell, John Walker. Okay, so the memes are everywhere, but one of the things you know, you know how everything is. You're talking about movies and television, and how they've gotten so close together now in in terms of the the budget. Like these shows look like you know they're they're movie level. Yeah. And, Everything has had kind of its where it was the it thing to be like it was an it thing to be on television or it was an it thing to have a movie or or a movie out or have a TV show that's in the top 10 or have a hit album. But in 2021, I could argue that it's almost as big a deal to have a hit series of memes that you're. Oh, yeah. In. Because there's some people that will never watch the Falcon Winter Soldier or even subscribe to Disney Plus. But they're going to see those damn memes on on social media, the Captain right. America, the Captain America memes. So you become more famous now, I think, from becoming a meme than you might become from being in the MCU. Right. I've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones, but just by knowing the memes, yes. I have an idea of what happened on that show. <laughs> the memes are probably circulated more to more people, to a wider audience, and they have more crossover appeal than the TV show or the movie in 2021 or the, oh, album, yeah. or the yeah. album or the record. So oh, yeah, I mean, are, it's, it's an extension now. of the brand, you know, it's like yeah. more brand awareness, you know, yeah. it's yeah. like, okay. Yeah. Why is this funny? And then you watch it to find out. I mean, as an artist now, you, you, you go into the lab to create some new, new, whatever it is you create. 
you start thinking about, oh, how can I create a hit meme? <laughs> this is going to blow up on the socials. It's not about a hit song or a movie or uh, let me come up with a good record. It's like, how am I going to get a hit meme tonight? Oh, what was the one that you made recently? Well, oh, which one? What was it? What was on? Uh, the Golden Girls oh, reunion. You know what? <laughs> it just so happens I have my Golden Girl. I made this this week, and I've been I've been posting it in places. I where's my Golden Girls meme? I've got, I do have a Golden Girls meme. Here it is. And I'll actually I'll <laughs> the Golden Girls reunion show sucked. And it, I don't know why you can see it. But this is Betty White's character, uh, Rose, sitting at the table with the cheesecake. And then in the background, there's Sophia, Dorothy, and Blanche. <laughs> so, this is the where Where are they now? And yeah, I, 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 I did that. I actually did the uh, Golden Girls meme. Um, another funny one, though, I found this week. I grabbed it off of somebody's page. Was the uh, I don't have it. I don't have it here. I would show it. Was the Alanis Moore set that I can't believe Alanis Moore set lost, lost her damn mind all over Dave Coulier from Full, Full House? <laughs> that, whole, that whole album was about uh, Uncle Joey on Full House. That that yeah. Alanis, that angst album, the 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 breakup album that was so big back in 1997, Alanis Moore set album or was it 96? Maybe like 95 or 96. That whole Alanis Moore set album that set her off, set her on her on her path career wise. All about Uncle Joey. That isn't the, that isn't that ironic? That's the action. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Everyone have a good night. <laughs> the whole show is over now. <laughs> Not the episode. Jazz, you, you take over. <laughs> Welcome to Jazzy Pop. <laughs> Jazzy Pop. Next, next half hour. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh boy. Yeah, Uncle freaking Joey. The whole with ex boyfriend that she was mad and upset. She did a whole album, was which was be pre pre Taylor Swift because Taylor Swift now would be the the breakup album like hit maker of our time. Oh, yeah. But Alanis Morissette, maybe the original like breakup album uh, hit maker. Well, you can even go back to like the seventies where they had that. Uh, what was that? That the, the, I bet you think the song is about you. Oh um, yeah. Carly Simon. I bet you think the song You're is so about vain. You. Yeah. You're so vain. Okay. That was probably the original. And then Alanis Morissette came along and they're probably someone before her, but as far as back as I know, well, no, no, no. Like Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> probably yeah right there would be another another example going a little further back so yeah anyway uh yeah uncle joey was the uh was the boy but and the reason why people a lot of people don't know that was because they didn't have memes back then if they had memes back then people would have known about it <laughs> the memes would have been all over that we didn't have memes in the 90s so that, that's, why, <laughs> that's why we didn't know but anyway uh any th uh thoughts of things you'd like to see uh we've got we only have three episodes left. That's the that's the bummer about the show. It's only six episodes, so it's real quick. I thought we'd get at least eight. So like only six? Only six. And the director said that he had he could have done eight, he could have done ten, but he said that this show, the story, I felt like was six episodes. Perfect. Well, it just six doesn't episodes. feel like we're halfway. Like, I don't know, man. It just feels like maybe a, a long movie, you know. It's just yeah. Yeah, you know, like yeah, to wrap this up in three more episodes. I mean, just because, like, at yeah. the end of uh, the episode, mm -hmm. uh, when uh, I can't remember the chick from Wakanda shows yeah. up, I'm like, shows up at the end. The oh shit! You know, yeah. and there's only like three more episodes. Three episodes. Man. Yeah. Well, but we don't know the runtime. I'd have to look at what the runtime is because there's there's usually a way to to look it up and find yeah. out what, like how many minutes total for the whole season. So then you can you can kind of uh, calculate based on that how many minutes are left. Maybe we got a ninety minute episode in there somewhere, which would be a you know, and then maybe two sixty minute. I hope so, because like you said, there's a lot, there's still a lot to tackle. Um, oh yeah. In the next uh, three shows, you hope that those are lengthier, lengthy episodes. 
um, to be able to to give us some conclusion or, or in, in at least some of these things that are going on. Um, but probably a lot more action. Oh, um, yeah. I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to, May the 4th. Uh, oh, yeah. The Bad Batch. The Bad Batch and, is the next big Disney Plus release in May 4th. Oh, well, Disney Plus did drop some Star Wars content today. The Ewok movies dropped today. Yes. Like yeah. classic, like the old classic Star Wars. Yeah, the then like Wars. the 2D animation Clone Wars uh, dropped. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there's some good uh, Star Wars content you know, uh, coming. Yeah, Big I can't Star wait to see the Bad Batch. Big it's Star basically Wars the A-Team in space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly what. Did Mr. T voice one of the characters? Does he get to come back? And... <laughs> hey, it's April Fool's. It's April Fool's. That's another me. Another me. <laughs> Another meme. I guarantee you there are kids that did not have any idea who Mr. T was until memes. And and, and he, they, they learned about Mr. T because of memes. So it all goes back to me. Memes are king in 2021. So anyway, yeah. So this show, I mean, there's a lot still, a lot still to be had to, to be happened that we haven't seen yet. Uh, we saw this, the, the other, uh, super soldier that we were introduced to last week that told him to get out of his damn house. You know, the old man was like, oh, get, out yeah. my, get out of my damn yard. <laughs> you know, he's going to come back. Does he come back? Is he, does he end up having to save Falcon and winter soldier in the end? Uh, um, I, I can't wait. Does he come back? Does he have an alias? And will we finally see what his alias is? Or is he just going to be the guy that he is in, in street, you know, in street clothes or military gear or whatever he shows up in. No, um, I've seen like uh, I've seen uh, f photos. I would you call them photos, drawings, or whatever yeah. from like the comic book of like the character that he's based on in the comic books. Yo, you did see that. There, the, what he, yeah. He be? Oh, yeah. We might see that version of him show up. Um, the other thing too is, is we, you know, uh, I called him the Nazi uh, Tony Stark, but is it Zemo? Zemo? Oh Zemo? yeah. Zemo. Uh, Zima? Zima. <laughs> Zima. <laughs> so, so the White Wolf, aka aka uh, Winter Soldier, is uh, meets with the 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 warrior from Wakanda uh, at the end of the you know it's a cliffhanger. So you got to think, well, shit's about to hit the fan there. What's going to happen there? And does it even get crazier if John Walker shows up in the middle of that fight? Oh yeah, because John Walker is also after the same thing as we as we find that he's he's you know they escape from prison. He's looking for Falcon and Winter Soldier. Does he track them down just about the time the shit's about to hit the fan between the uh, the Wakanda uh, warrior? Um, Man, I, I tell you, it's going to be a what these next three weeks are going to be a wild ride. So, you know? So I wonder, uh, I think he makes it though. I think somehow, I think somehow, and I think it's possible both these guys make it through this whole, this whole series and we get more John Walker later and, um, and more of the uh, Zemo. Yeah. There's something that like, whatever happens in that sixth episode is going to be setting up, you know, for whatever we get next from Marvel. Like yeah. I, I can't wait, you know, like, man, I, um, you know, finally broke down got the HBO max. Yeah. And um, mainly to see Justice League, yeah. which wasn't why I wanted it to be. Like, I like the characters, you know, the uh, I like the DC characters more, you know, being an adoptee, I, I related to Superman, you know, having mm -hmm. lost my parents, I relate to Batman, you know, <laughs> uh, but just, um, you know, I like the, those characters more than the MCU characters. Yeah. But, Man, MCU can just like tell a story better, you know, uh, get you more invested, you know, on the good guys and bad guys, you know, and just have some nuance. Whereas, man, somehow, you know, it's so hit or miss with, uh, D, you know, DC, yeah. you know, after watching, uh, we call it Justice League. I got older during Justice League. That thing was four hours long. Like I was literally older by the time it was over. You know, it was like a like a damn Hobbit movie, man. I'm like, please end. Like, stop ending. You know, I'm like, okay, it's over. Credits. Fuck. Here's another ending. Like, you no, know, I did not need the whole 
you know, future thing with the Joker at the end. I'm like, please just end the damn movie, you know. But then I watched Joker afterwards, which everybody told me I should see, mm -hmm. you know. And then yeah. I finally saw it, and I'm like, man, I'm kicking myself. I should have watched this, like, way earlier. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, watching Doom Patrol, which is kind of like yeah. the boys meet Black Mirror. Yeah, it sounds – I haven't – I have not watched it, I'm embarrassed to say, but it's on my list now. A whole lot of what the fuck. List. <laughs> I love how many how many how long is that how many seasons I uh, like I think I want to say there's like 14 uh episodes in the first uh season wow. and like nine in the second yeah. and uh yeah it's one of those things like every time you think you know what kind of show this is it feels familiar left turn wow I love it I'm on board uh, set set me up. I'm I'm on my board. I'm, I'm I'm on board. It's on my list. Who was the guy? What was the guy in the uh, Scorpion movies? The uh, the Mummy movies. Oh, uh, Brendan Fraser. You talking about? Yeah, the, the he's in movie? it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Brendan Fraser. Yeah, I used to love Brendan Fraser. Yeah, dude, you're gonna dig this if you get, get a chance. Watch some of it. And he's been kind of off the off the radar for a while, but it's it's cool to see that he's in. He he's been in a few things here and there, like we're we're compared, but back like in the late nineties, he was everywhere. We oh yeah. A couple movies a year coming out. Um, so, okay. Okay, cool. I want, I want to, that's on my short list to check out. Um, yeah. DC. I know I was trying to figure this out. I was like, why can't, cause DC has had some good movies. Yeah. The first wonder woman was a uh, solid first one. You know, solid. Yeah. I even like, I, mean, Man, I like man of steel. Yeah. Man of I mean, I like the Nolan, uh, Batman movies. Yeah. Solid. Oh, those are, those are masterpieces. The Tim Burton awesome. Batman movie, like yeah. with the Prince music. Like That's I wish that was a thing. Like I wish like every Batman movie had Prince music. I think it's one. You know they when they made um, when they made the 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 Josh Whedon twenty seventeen Justice League that ended up becoming the the redone Zack Snyder movie that was supposed to be the the, the movie that that to begin with. Um, Whedon came when Whedon came in and took over Snyder's movie. Um, and by the way, that happened because of family emergency. He had a family, he had, he had a, a tragedy in his family. And that's why he left the movie. Uh, unfortunate situation. Um, but he was, he was intended to stay on and finish that movie, but he had to leave the movie. So when Joss Whedon came in and took over, and it's never an easy task for someone to come in the middle of something and say, here, finish it. You know, it's hard enough is it to, to make a movie. More challenge, it's challenging enough to for production and make a big budget movie or any movie and finish it, but to come in in the middle of something and say, "Here, take over, um, finish this," and here's some notes, by the way, from the execs. But when Josh Whedon came in, he actually uh, changed the music, and he brought in uh, Danny Elfman from the Tim Burton Batman movies to bring in some of the music that he he does, and he brought back the Batman uh, his his instrumental theme from the original oh, Burton Batman movies. So if you go back and watch the Justice League from 2017, that Danny Elfman music uh, is in there from the, the the Batman movie. So whenever you see Batman, you hear that Danny Elfman version, but no Prince. Still, they didn't bring the Prince. Sadly, back. Bat Dance wasn't in there. That's where they messed up. That's where <laughs> or <DC's>, Party Man. <laughs> that's where DC's making the biggest mistake. Well, I've wanted them to do a re a redoing of the '60s Batman for a long time, kind of like an updated version, but with that aesthetic from the <laughs> '60s. That would be a, kind of its own thing. It could be a series on the streaming platform, but make like kind of like a modern version with modern things, but with the '60s aesthetic, with the Batman and Robin in tights and the bang and pow and the cheesy um, set design but with modern day like situations like Tinder dating, um, <laughs> you know, Robin going on a Tinder date, things like that. So I would, that to me is what I would like for me. That would be, and you could even expand it and have your own like version of that DC universe, the DC campy universe, and then do a Superman as well in that same universe, but make it kind of a comedy, all comedy. Oh, damn. Uh, that's what I would love to see that. I, I, at some point, I think that they did. It was good writing, but here's the big problem with the DC. There is a, the inconsistency. 
Wonder Woman's great. Um, the Snyder Cut, not bad. Uh, just like you said, it was t way long, and it was the musical number. Indulgent. <laughs> yeah, it was very indulgent. It was almost like Zack Snyder had said, because he didn't get a chance to finish his movie in 2017, and and then there was the hashtag, uh, you know, the Snyder Cut, uh, give us the Snyder Cut, you know, hashtag that got this going. Which, by the way, sometimes the internet gets what it wants. It got when years ago there was a speaking of uh, Golden Girls, there was an internet campaign to get Betty White to host Saturday Night Live. That hashtag and that campaign was successful, and they got her on on Saturday Night Live to host it. It was it was a it was a fun show. Snyder cut. Internet asked for the Snyder cut. The internet got the Snyder cut. It's almost like Zack Snyder though wanted to try so much to try to like show up the 2017 version that he might have even <clears throat> went overboard and like overdid it at times. That's what I saw from it. He was like, oh, you want some Snyder Cut, don't you? I'll give you some Snyder Cut. <laughs> and then some. So it was like you said, then it gets a little bit of indulgent, at, 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 and uh, especially in that first half, some of the musical numbers. But then there's like some great stuff. Like, <clears throat> like the, the line that I think it might have been in their first one is like, what's your superpowers, Batman? It's like, I'm rich. <laughs> that's that's a great line. This, I mean, who who can't love as a fan of superhero movies? Who can't love that Batman in that spaceship where Batman fires up his 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 bat spaceship? I mean that that stuff's cool. Um, the Wonder Woman in the bank in the hostage situation is probably the best Wonder Woman scene of any Wonder Woman thing they've done with Wonder Woman so far. But oh, that yeah. whole, that whole action sequence was was one of the best parts of the movie. Um so yeah, there's some cool there was some cool stuff like that. It was still fun to watch. It was just it gets very long. It's very long. So I don't know. Um better than what I saw in 2017 because the 2017 one well, didn't make any sense at times. Real choppy. But the problem, the difference between MCU and and DC is something DC can't really fix is Kevin Feige. The MCU has Kevin Feige, and it's almost like a uh, the Feige system. No matter who's in charge, who the director is, because it's always, you know, they, over the years, they've had a, a number of different directors, a number of different writers, but it's always Feige that oversees everything and manages it all as a producer. And the fight, it's the Feige system. <laughs> they, have that in, they have that in sports. They'll have coaches that, that they're known for their system and it works. It just works sometimes. The system of the of the you know, the infrastructure they create it it creates a culture. And Feige is that for movies. He he creates a, a a Feige system, and it doesn't seem to. It rarely fails. There's only been one movie I think that they've they've missed on, but I think they they've been ninety nine point nine percent. Where DC is kind of like fifty fifty. Like you you could flip a coin. Is this going to be a good DC movie? Or is this going to be one of the not so good DC movies? It's always a coin toss. Oh yeah. So I don't know. What was your favorite of the DC EU movies so far? That the one you were like, okay, they got it there. They they did that. If they could just stick with that and keep doing that, they would be fine. Was there one that stood out to you? You mentioned a couple. Yeah, man. Uh, just uh, you know, going back to the Nolan uh, movies, yeah, you know, like those were okay, cohesive so back, and felt solid. That. Yeah, but you no, know, I guess if you're technically DCEU, uh, you know, the that first Wonder Woman movie, you know, that one was solid. Same here know? for me. Yeah, and Joker was, you know, it was basically Taxi Driver, you know, and uh, clowns. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, and they're and they're doing the same. They're going to do the same thing MCU does, and they did it in the comic books. They're going to have their own multiverse. They even just said because they're making they've been making that Robert Pattinson Batman movie, the Batman, and they said they just acknowledge that that's part of this other multiverse. I think that it's Earth Two. That's so that's one multiverse, and then they have the Ben Affleck Batman universe, and they have the Michael Keaton Batman universe. So all of them are supposed to be a part of a multiverse, which makes prince could very well end up because that music is a part of a multiverse it's part of one of the Bruh. earth's earth's cannons bro does that mean prince is still alive in the tim burton batman universe we can only hope so and, and also, how do i get there 
get to that multiverse. Prince. <laughs> yeah. Get to the one where he's still alive and still jamming. Um, he's still jamming, but he's not jamming. He's not, you know, physically here jamming, but he's still jamming. He's forever jamming. Yeah, I know. I know. Gets me in the feels too. But uh, if they bring back, they're trying to get Michael Keaton to come back for the Flash movie because that's where they're going to introduce their multiverse. If they could pull that off, and then right now it's not for sure he's going to come back and do it. But if they could pull that off, you have to have, then you, that's when you have to work in Prince. You have Michael Keaton. Right now. <laughs> you got to have Prince. The Prince Bro, music. The Prince music. One time I was in this uh, clothing store and they had like Superman, Batman, and like Flash underwear, like adult underoos type thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I could see like, man, you've got the right swag, like Man of Steel. Yeah, you could pull that off. You got the right energy, right? Yeah. And not uh, like, you know, you know, date night, you're the dark night. Yeah. If you got you know, if you got enough swag, you got enough drip, you can pull that off. I was thinking, man, you show up there in the flash, no woman wants the flash. <laughs> The flash is a little bit too quick. <laughs> yeah. That's the wrong, that's the wrong one to pick. <laughs> For that very reason. We'll be done in a flash. <laughs> and she didn't finish. <laughs> One thing, this is a little off subject. Before we close out, I want to ask you about something uh, else that I didn't even have this. In, I didn't. I did not even have this in my notes. But before the show, we were talking about uh, the expansion of the NFL season, where they're adding a game. Now, this is not a football podcast, but this does relate to everyday life. This situation. So, I heard this on the radio earlier uh, earlier in the week. If they're they're adding a game and a lot of people are not going to be happy about that because if they lose a bye week and all the confusion about whether they would lose a bye week and whether they would have to add like another week between the Super Bowl and the finish of the the regular season and the playoffs, if they did that to give the players a proper rest and break, the Super Bowl could end up some years landing on Valentine's Day. So. I mean, it was bad enough when it landed on Groundhog's Day, but now it's it could end up landing on on Valentine's Day. Uh, that's when you're gonna start having. The shit is getting real. Oh yes, things getting serious. Do the Okay, what do you Baby, think? About Maybe I love you, but I love the Saints more. <laughs> I mean, that, that it's going to depend who's in the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, that's that's going to cause the breakup of relationships. The NFL <laughs> single-handedly, because if they if they have that scheduling conflict, they are literally going to cause. They may get sued by Hallmark. Oh, <laughs> and they chocolate might. companies. And First, she's going to be suing them. <laughs> Cat Berry. Suing them. Because some of that Super Bowl money, some of that Valentine's money is going to be uh, going to Super Bowl snacks. So, and restaurants, well, the biggest one would be restaurants. Because for some restaurants in typical normal years, it's a big revenue generator for restaurants because of people going out to eat at nicer restaurants for, for a date night. Yeah. So re restaurants would lose big on that. I think they got to figure out a solution. They got to figure out, they can't, that can't be a thing. <laughs> that can't be a thing. I mean, what do you think about that? Man, I could see it being complicated. Yeah, but uh, they cause they've opened up another problem in in their in this <laughs> in this planning in this planning situation of trying to make it another have adding another regular season game. All right, well, Jazz on this Thunder Pop Extra, sir, it's always a pleasure. Man, always. A a pleasure always a good time to hang out man it's like this is normally like when we used to see each other at the coffee shop this is literally the same conversations we would be having back then we need to open a thunder pop cafe yeah. <laughs> the expansion of this show is to have our own little coffee shop cafe exactly lataza pop <laughs> after, the, after the covid's over we're going to open a, a thunder pop 
Taza Fresca <laughs> place. But in the meantime, it'll just be it'll be this because. But yeah, our favorite coffee shop, La Taza Fresca, rest in peace. It, it closed down, and at one point they were going to reopen it at a different location. Yeah, out and burn it. Uh, regional. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's maybe it still happens. I don't know if it's if it's going to happen, but I remember that was a possibility at one time. Missed that place. Had a vibe, man. A vibe. Oh yeah, absolutely, well, dude. It was always a pleasure, man, hanging out. Always a pleasure. I want to thank everyone out there for viewing, watching, putting up with us for the last hour. Everyone out there have a good day, hour, second, millisecond. I'm Stephen Presley, Jazz One, Thunder Pop. Catch us on all the socials where we're at, at Thunder Pop TV on Instagram, at Thunder Pop TV on TikTok, and just same place on YouTube. All right, good night. Where's my closeout? Where's my damn closeout? It's there. Here he goes. Outro. Thunder Pop is a Hit the Bricks production.